Hey guys, today we're going to talk about magnesium, a very interesting mineral. There's a lot to know about it. I'm just going to take it from the top. Magnesium is a cofactor. Okay, what is a cofactor? It's a helper element involved in the activation of certain enzymes. There's actually 300 enzymes that magnesium is involved with. And uh, the one that I'm going to talk about is involved in the mitochondria, and it has to do with producing energy. Without getting too technical, it's called the Krebs cycle. Maybe you took biology in high school and you learned about the Krebs cycle. Very, very simply, it's um, the combination of fuel or glucose, if you're going to use glucose, or there's other fuels too, uh, plus oxygen. So the biochemistry uh, might appear to be very complex, but if you think about a carburetor, what is a carburetor? It's basically a device in your car or your lawnmower that is mixing a drop of fuel with oxygen in the right ratios to then ignite through a little spark plug to produce energy, right? Well, you have the same thing happening in the mitochondria, but the spark plug that activates the enzyme that ignites this combination of fuel and oxygen is magnesium and vitamin B1, okay? I mean, there's other, uh, other nutrients as well, but those two are the big ones. So if, if you don't have enough magnesium in your body, you're gonna uh, suffer from low energy. You're gonna have fatigue. Um, there's other things too that you might experience. Inability to relax. So magnesium helps muscles relax, calms down nerves, uh, slows the rate of nerve impulses, and it's really important in heart physiology. If you don't have enough magnesium, you get cramps in the calves, you get spasms, you, your muscles become very, very tight. Uh, you might even develop something called atrial fibrillation. Now that could also be a potassium mineral, another similar uh, mineral that has similar functions, uh, but atrial fibrillation is part of the heart is fibrillating. It's not in rhythm and it's kind of quivering. And that could be either a magnesium deficiency or a potassium deficiency. You can get constipation. Well, you have muscles around the colon. You have this pumping action called peristalsis. So if you don't have enough magnesium, everything kind of backs up and it doesn't work. It's kind of like your whole colon becomes very, very tight and you might be bloated and you get constipated. Uh, and because the muscles aren't relaxing, your blood pressure goes up. If you can't relax, you're going to have insomnia. You're not going to be able to sleep. You're going to have heart rhythm problems and palpitation, uh, possibly chronic back pain. A lot of times the muscles are just very, very, very tight. They're in a spasm and it's going to pinch around the nerve. Migraines. So you can see that magnesium deficiencies can create a lot of problems. You also need vitamin D to help absorb magnesium. So a lot of times people associate vitamin D just with calcium absorption, but you also need it for magnesium. Uh, magnesium and calcium also are needed. So in other words, if you have too much or too little calcium, that's going to affect the amount of magnesium that you are going to be able to utilize and absorb. Insulin resistance is a situation where you have um, insulin doesn't connect with the cell that well. The receptor is like blocking it. So we have a resistance, which by the way, always will increase the amount of insulin because you have the feedback loops aren't connecting. So the body feels that it's not going in. So it produces more. So insulin resistance is a situation where you have too much insulin and it's just blocked. Well, when you have insulin resistance, you can't absorb magnesium and other minerals as well. Now, by taking more magnesium, you can improve insulin resistance. You can increase the sensitivity of insulin and make insulin work better. And also by taking magnesium, you can help the absorption of potassium. So you can see there's a lot of relationship between vitamins and minerals and hormones. Um, they all work together. Okay, so where do you get magnesium? Okay, well, one of the best places are, are foods that are high in chlorophyll. Okay, chlorophyll is like the blood of the plant. The chemistry of chlorophyll is very similar to your own blood, but your blood has iron as its main mineral and chlorophyll has magnesium. So you want to consume a lot more leafy greens to get your magnesium. But the cool thing is you're going to also get the potassium, you're going to get calcium, and your vitamins as well. Uh, it's in nuts and seeds. And as a last side point, um, the quantity of leafy greens you would need would be roughly around seven cups to eight cups or even up to 10 cups per day to get your um, minimum amounts of magnesium. But that way you'll get your potassium as well. All right, well, thanks for watching. Hey guys, so there's a whole bunch of people that really need this information. So press the share button and let's get it way out there.